Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me to Acts chapter 12. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. You almost want to stop there. There's a lot just in those first few verses, right? The king is on a rampage, and king, we can use that term loosely. Um, James is killed, and so he grabs Peter also. He's got plans for Peter. He's got evil plans, right? And yet, that last line, but earnest prayer was made for him to God by the church. What does that look like? What does that sound like? Well, I think it was persistent. I think it was sincere. I think it was ongoing. And they were together. Hmm. One of the things that prayer does is bring us, us together. As we uh, unite in a common, you know, it's that idea of, you know, we use the word amen often to end our prayer. So be it. And when we agree in that, uh, we're coming together in agreement. And so the church there was gathered together in agreement. They were praying for Peter to be released. And you know, God hears the prayers of the righteous. Now, here's what happens next. Now, when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and sentries before the door regarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and along one street, and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord had sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice, it, in her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. And they said to her, you're out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was, and they kept saying, it's his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened it, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning with him with his hands to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, tell these things to James and the brothers. And he departed and went to another place. And when day came, there was a little disturbance among the soldiers over what had become of Peter. And after Herod searched for him and did not find him, he examined the sentries and ordered that they should be put to death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and spent time there. Church is praying. God was working. And he sends this angel to lead Peter out through gates and Peter's kind of thinking he's dreaming, it's a vision or something, and all of a sudden he realizes after he's a couple streets away from the prison, this is real. And so he goes to John Mark's house, uh, the house of Mary, uh, the mother of John Mark, and knocks on the door and the servant girl uh, recognizes Peter's voice. They don't believe her, the same people that were praying. So maybe we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves, right? When we uh, pray and our faith is small and it's little and our expectation is low of what is going to happen. Look, they were seeing the real deal. They were seeing God answer prayer in powerful ways. And yet it took a lot of convincing for them to realize, oh, he's actually at the door. So maybe you just want to bash on them or maybe you'd rather say, well, they should have had more faith, you know. The facts remain, they prayed, God answered, Peter's released, and 
It turned everything upside down. For the people, for Peter, when God does what we don't expect, even when we're praying about it, causes us, I think it's going to cause them to pray more, to expect more. What does it do in our lives? Just reading that is exciting. Just hearing about that is amazing. So let's pray boldly, expectantly, and watch and see God work in and through our lives. Till next time, I'm Little by Little.